Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're looking at CSS basics. What is the optimal way to set the height and the width for a full-size page? What is the best way to set the height for a page that grows beyond the height of the viewport? And do you sometimes get a horizontal scroll bar and you're not sure why? With this tutorial and every tutorial I create, my goal is to help you learn how to build the web. And if you'd like to see more of that, click the subscribe button you see right over there in the corner. All right, let's get started. We're starting with a basic HTML page. You can see I've got the skeleton for a page, a title, a link to a CSS file, and an H1 heading with Hello World. And to the right, we see the page. I'm using live server, so it will update automatically as we make changes. And really, there are no styles. If we inspect, take a look at the page, and this is DevTools in Chrome, we can mouse over the elements. There's the HTML element, and you can see the height it has, and we see that displayed over here as I mouse over. It's 79. 56 pixels and 421.1 pixels wide. The 79.56 is the height. And if we go down to the body, you'll notice there's a difference. It is not as tall as the HTML element. And it also has the orange around it, which is a margin. So the body has a default margin uh, in Chrome and probably several other browsers as well. What we want to look at to compare these and how we set them today is to go into not just styles where we see this here midway down in DevTools, but the computed styles so we can really see the difference in what the actual values are. And computed style starts with the box model here on top and then it shows the height and we're looking at the height for the HTML element and there's the width and I can click on body and you can see how that changes. There's the width down here at the bottom, but the body also has a margin of eight pixels on all sides right now. So the first thing we start out with in the CSS, which is currently blank, is the reset. And that is an asterisk, and that means all, and we'll set the margins to zero, padding to zero, and then we use box sizing, and I always set that to border box. So let's look at what that does quickly. Now you notice there's no space around the edges where we have hello world. Body no longer has a, a orange margin around it. And let's look at the HTML. They're the same dimensions now. So just our CSS reset alone has made the HTML and the body elements mirror the dimensions of each other. So we have a height of just a little over 36 pixels and the margins are all set to zero, the padding's all set to zero, and a width of just over 421 pixels, and we'll find that's the same on both elements. The next thing we do, and this is where it gets a little confusing. Uh, sometimes we just wing this until it works, but it's good to have a consistent way we do this. So the root element is HTML. And it's important to know that that's the root element because some sizing, such as root ENs, go back and look at this root element. So we have a root element of HTML, and then we also have a body element. Sometimes you see these set together, like HTML comma body. And I have done this in the past, but after I researched this, I have stopped doing this. That is because it's important to set some things on the HTML and let them be inherited by the body. But then there's also this weird behavior where sometimes the HTML element, if it does not have a property set, will assume what the body has set for its properties in, in some instances. So let's take a look at that. First of all, if we set body alone without setting HTML to a height, of 100% and we're trying to have a full page, you might think that would work. But if I mouse over the body in Chrome DevTools, you can see the height is still 36.7 pixels. It does not fill the page. And further, when I look at the HTML element, 
The height there is also 36.7 pixels. So it does not fill the page at all, even though we set height to 100%. That is because when using a percentage, it inherits from the parent. And we have not set a height value on the HTML element at all. And therefore it cannot inherit a certain amount. It doesn't have anything to base its 100% on, in other words. So if we were to say height 100% in the HTML also, the HTML inherits from the viewport itself. And so now if I save this and I'll mouse over the HTML, you can see now the entire page is blue. And if I mouse over the body element, now the entire page is blue as well. And you can see in the computed style, it's now 699.083 pixels. And that would be the same for the HTML. So the body is assuming 100% height of its parent HTML element. And the HTML is assuming 100% height of the viewport that it inherits from. Now there is something that's uh, intermediary between the HTML element and the viewport. And that is the root pseudo selector. And it actually uh, carries just a little bit more weight than the HTML element itself. So if we set a height of 50 viewport units or half of the viewport, now when I mouse over the HTML, it's inheriting from this root pseudo selector. And it's only taking up half the height of the viewport, or essentially 50% of the viewport, which is what this is, but it's taking 100% of what it is given, so it's 100% inheriting from its parent. Likewise, body gets 100% of what HTML has, and so it should match, and it does. So what's the exact solution to have a height that's 100% of the page? And let's look at a couple of ways this has been done. I'll get rid of that pseudo root selector, but it's good to know it exists. And let's go ahead and put a border around the body element. So I'll say five pixels and dashed red. So it stands out. And right now the body element is 100% of the height element. The height element is 100% of the viewport. So it is taking up the full screen that we have here. And if I reopen DevTools, we can see that border all the way around our viewport. And let's go ahead and inspect again. Looking at the computed size, if we come down to height, 699 pixels, which is what we see in DevTools as well. Now let's go ahead and add some extra text to our HTML page. And I'll use an Emmet abbreviation to add a lot of lorem text here. And save that. You can see we have a lot of lorem text on our page. And we have a border around our body element. Notice how the body element did not grow with the content. The content has overflowed the element, and we can see that by scrolling down and highlighting the body element in DevTools. Likewise, the HTML element did also stay the same size, really. It didn't change at all either, and if we look at its computed height, it's also 699. So our content is overflowing both elements, not only our root HTML element, but also the body element. And that 100% is staying true to the initial viewport, but it's not allowing our page to grow, and we don't really want to overflow the body element. Sometimes the HTML element has been overflown in the past, overflowed, and it has been acceptable. So let's look at how that has been in the past. And in the solution previously, in previous years, has been to have the height 100% on the HTML element, but then set a min height of 100% on the body element. Notice as I saved that, the dashed red line at the bottom went away. What that does is it ensures that the body element is at least as tall as the viewport. It's inheriting from the HTML element, but it also allows it to grow that min height setting allows it to grow, whereas the height is the absolute and it cannot grow. 
And now when we scroll down, we can see the body element actually contains all of our content. And if we highlight that in DevTools, yes, it's true. However, the HTML element does not grow. And like I said, that has been considered acceptable in the past to overflow the HTML element and still let the body element continue to grow. So height 100% on the HTML element, min height of 100% on the body element has successfully worked for years. However, there is another way to do this. Let's go ahead and remove the height from the HTML element. And now, instead of setting a min height of 100% as the percentage needs to inherit from the direct parent, the HTML, let's set the height or min height on the body to 100 viewport units. What that does is skips the parent and goes directly to the viewport to get the value. Now in the past, there have been some issues on mobile devices with viewport height and width units. However, it looks like they have mostly got that worked out at this point. At least the browsers are all handling it pretty much the same. And this is a way to set the height for not only the body, as we'll see, because it does grow and contains all of this content, but also the HTML element now assumes that height that the body has set on it in almost a reversal of inheritance here. The HTML element goes ahead and grows with the body element. And you can see in the computed style, the height is now 3,765 pixels for the HTML element as well as for the body element. Once I scroll to the right spot, there it is, 3,765 and the HTML, 3,765. So now they grow together with this setting. Now that we've looked at height, let's take a quick look at the width also. And if we look at the computed value while we're highlighting the body element, we see the width is 421 pixels, just like DevTool shows us. And we can look at the same for the HTML element, 421 pixels. And we have not set a width, so it seems that the width is automatically 100% of the viewport. Let's see what happens if we set a width of 100% on the body, because then using the same philosophy we used for the height, we haven't set a width on HTML, and maybe it wouldn't have anything to draw that number from. So once again, if I highlight the body element, and now we look at the width under the computed styles, it's 421 and it's set. So that actually works. And I almost always set the body width out of habit, but stick with the percentage and I'll show you why. If you try to use viewport units here, and I have done this in the past and it sometimes wondered why this happened. So now we've set it to 100 viewport units and everything looks okay as far as the width and I'll expand this away from DevTools. Look, I've got a scroll bar on the bottom of the page now. Why would I have a scroll bar? That doesn't seem to make sense. Let's look at what causes that. And let's start by removing the lorem. And we save, we've got rid of our lorem, and look, no more scroll bar. Why is that content causing a horizontal scroll bar? We set the width to 100 viewport units. If we put in 20, let's go ahead and get that right, uh, 20 of the lorems. It's not enough to make the page scroll. And when we talk about scroll here, we mean up and down, which is vertically. And the, the vertical scroll bar is okay, but what about that horizontal scroll bar? Well, the problem comes from having enough content that actually activates the vertical scroll bar. And if you activate the vertical scroll bar, it takes up about 10 pixels of width that those viewport units don't account for. And so at that point, the content goes beyond what is visible and this scroll bar at the bottom pops up. 
because we can't see everything. We no longer see our dashed line. And that is because of the 10 pixels that this vertical scroll bar takes up. And if we switch that, if we get away from the viewport units, the percentage will take that into account. And now our scroll bar along the horizontal axis is gone. No more horizontal scroll bar. We still have our vertical scroll bar, but now we can see our dashed line and everything we expect to be on the page is visible without a scroll bar appearing at the bottom. So at the end of the day, what do I set as a default on the HTML element? At this point, we've set a couple of styles that we'll keep on the body element, although we might get rid of the border, and we have set our CSS reset. But what about the HTML element? Well, remember, it's the root element, unless we actually use the root pseudo selector. And we'll set some things on the HTML element as the root that will be inherited, but will also be referred to when we use properties that refer, or property values that refer back to the root element, like root ENs. So for example, we'll set a font size, which usually defaults in most browsers to 16 pixels, but we can set it as an absolute value of 16 pixels. And then anywhere in our styles that we would set to one REM units, one rem, that would refer to the 16 pixels. However, EMs work a little bit differently, and that could be the subject for another video. Uh, font family, we could set uh, to whatever we want here, and that would be inherited in the rest of the page. And we could also set the font color as a default, and that would be inherited unless we were to override that somewhere in our properties as well. And so these are the kind of things we can put right in our root element and let them be inherited by the elements that the cascade falls to in CSS. And likewise, we want to consider something like font size that would be referred to by a root EM unit or a rem. How do you set the height and the width for your pages in CSS? Do you have some tips and tricks that you'd like to share in the comments below? Please do and I'll read them. In the meantime, the videos on the left may help you on your coding journey. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing. I appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.